Krishna book, wonderful Krishna, chapter 26. Without understanding the intricacies of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and without knowing his uncommon spiritual opulences, the innocent cowherd boys and men of Vrindavan began to discuss his wonderful activities, which surpassed the activities of all men. One of them said, my dear friends, considering his wonderful activities, how is it possible that such an uncommon boy would come and live with us in Vrindavan? It is really not possible. Just imagine, he is now only seven years old. How is it possible for him to lift Govardhan Hill in one hand and hold it up just as a king of elephants holds a lotus flower? To lift a lotus flower is the most insignificant thing for an elephant. And similarly, Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill without exertion. When he was simply a small baby and could not even see properly, he killed a great demon, Putana, while sucking her breast. He also sucked out her life air. Krishna killed the Putana demon exactly as eternal time kills a living creature in due course. When he was only three months old, he was sleeping underneath a hand-driven cart. Being hungry for his mother's breast, he began to cry and throw his legs upwards and from the kicking of his small feet, the cart immediately broke apart and fell to pieces. When he was only one year old, he was carried away by the Trinavata demon, disguised as a whirlwind. And although he was taken very high in the sky, he simply hung on the neck of the demon and forced him to fall from the sky and immediately die. Once his mother, being disturbed by his stealing butter, tied him to a wooden mortar and the child pulled it towards a pair of trees known as Yamala Arjuna and caused them to fall. Once, when he was engaged in tending the calves in the forest, along with his elder brother Balaram, a demon named Bakasura appeared and Krishna at once bifurcated the demon's beak. When the demon known as Vatsasura entered among the calves, tended by Krishna with a desire to kill him, he immediately detected this demon, killed him and threw him into a tree. When Krishna, along with his brother Balaram, entered the Talavan forest, the demon known as Denakasura, in the shape of an ass, attacked them and was immediately killed by Balaram, who caught him by the hind legs and threw him into a palm tree. Although the Denakasura demon was assisted by his cohorts, also in the shape of asses, all were killed and the Talavan forest was then open for the use of the animals and inhabitants of Vrindavan. When Pralambasura entered amongst Krishna's cowherd boyfriends, Krishna caused him to be killed by Balaram. Thereafter, Krishna saved his friends and cows from a severe forest fire and he chastised the Kaliya serpent in the lake of the Jamuna river and forced him to leave the vicinity of the Yamuna. He therefore made the water of the Yamuna poisonless. Another one of the friends of Nanda Maharaj said, My dear Nanda, we do not know why we are so attracted by your son, Krishna. We want to forget him, but this is impossible. Why are we so naturally affectionate toward him? Just imagine how wonderful it is on one hand, he's only a boy of seven years. And on the other hand, there is a huge hill like Govardhan Hill, and he lifted it so easily. O oh, Nanda Maharaj, we are now in great doubt. Your son Krishna must be one of the demigods. He is not at all an ordinary boy. Maybe he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. On hearing the praises of the cowherd men in Vrindavan, King Nanda said, my dear friends, in reply to you, I can simply present the statement of Gargamuni so that your doubts may be cleared. When he came to perform the name giving ceremony, he said that this boy descends in different periods of time in different colors, and that this time he has appeared in Vrindavan in a blackish color known as Krishna. Previously, he had a white color, then a red color, then a yellow colour. He also said that this boy was once the son of Vasudev and everyone who knows of his previous birth calls him Vasudev. Actually, 
He said that my son has many varieties of names according to his different qualities and activities. Gargachari assured me that this boy would be all auspicious for my family and that he would be able to give transcendental blissful pleasure to all the cowherd men and cows in Vrindavan. Even though we will be put into various kinds of difficulties, by the grace of this boy we will be very easily freed from them. He also said that formerly this boy saved the world from an unregulated condition and he saved all honest men from the hands of the dishonest thieves. He also said that any fortunate man who becomes attached to this boy Krishna is never vanquished or defeated by his enemy. On the whole, he is exactly like Lord Vishnu, who always takes the side of the demigods, who are consequently never defeated by the demons. Gagacharya thus concluded that my child will grow to be exactly like Vishnu in transcendental beauty, qualification, activities, influence and opulence. And so we should not be very astonished by his wonderful activities. After telling me this, Gagacharya returned home. And since then, we have been continually seeing the wonderful activities of this child. According to the version of Gagaracharya, I consider that he must be Narayan himself, or maybe a plenary portion of Narayan. When all the cowherd men had very attentively heard the statements of Gagaracharya through Nanda Maharaj, they better appreciated the wonderful activities of Krishna and became very jubilant and satisfied. They began to praise Nanda Maharaj, but just by consulting him, the doubts about Krishna were cleared. They said, Let Krishna, who is so kind, beautiful and merciful, protect us. When angry Indra sent torrents of rain, accompanied by showers of ice blocks and high wind, Krishna immediately took compassion upon us and saved us and our families, cows and valuable possessions by picking up Govardhan Hill just as a child picks up a mushroom. He saved us so wonderfully. May he continue to glance mercifully over us and our cows. May we live peacefully under the protection of wonderful Krishna. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 26th chapter of Krishna, entitled Wonderful Krishna. <laughs>